Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare प्रेम से कहो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधार शिवा श्री गौर भक्त श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण गोपिनाथ श्याम कुंड राधा कुंड गिरी गोवर्धन की जाय श्री श्री राधा माधव सखी वृंद की जाय श्री श्री जगन्नाथ बलदेव सुभद्रा महारानी की जाय श्री श्री पंचतत्व की जाय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधार शिवा श्री गौर भक्त वृंद Gaur Premanande Hari 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 All glories to the assembled devotees All glories to the assembled devotees All glories to the assembled devotees All glories to Shri Guru and Shri Gaurango All glories to Shri Prabhupada Namo Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Sharashwati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunnavadi Pashtyata Shri Shri Jagannath Baladev Subhadra Maharani Ki Hare Krishna Today is the Return Rath Festival of Lord Jagannath Jagannath left Vrindavan and went to Mathura. When he left Vrindavan, he assured the gopis that I'll come back soon. But many, many years went by, Krishna didn't return. Krishna didn't return because he got stuck in Mathura. When he went to Mathura, the purpose of going to Mathura was to kill Kamsa. Actually, Kamsa invited his own death. Kamsa thought that he would kill Krishna. Kamsa tried in so many ways to kill Krishna. He tried to kill Krishna even before he was born. He killed six of his other brothers those who appeared before him. Then, 
as the seventh child of Devaki and Vasudev, Balaram appeared and in the womb of Devaki and from Devaki's womb Balaram was transferred to Rohini's womb and everyone thought that Devaki had a miscarriage and then finally comes a tried in so many ways to prevent Krishna's birth he put Devaki and Vasudev in the prison tied them up with chains so that they couldn't even meet uh, but still the Supreme Personality of Godhead uh, from Vasudev's heart was transmitted to the to Devaki's heart and then to Devaki's womb. So the appearance of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, although he takes birth, his birth is not like ordinary living entities getting a material body or getting a birth. He can appear in any way. He takes birth. He doesn't need to take birth. Ajo Pisa, Ajo Nitta Shashrata Ayam Purana. No, the verse that I was thinking. Ajo Pishan Abhayatma. Krishna told Arjun, when Arjun was surprised to hear that Krishna gave this knowledge to Sun God Vivashwan. Krishna was Arjun's cousin. He was of the same age. They were very close friends. And then all of a sudden, his friend is telling him that, look, I gave this knowledge to Sun God. And Sun God gave it to uh, his son Manu, Vaivashrata Manu. Uh, and Manu gave it to his son Ikshaku, which happened so many years ago. Therefore, Arjun's natural question was, Krishna, you were born just the other day. Aparang bhavotu janma. You were just born the other day. Parang janma vivashvata. But Vivashan was born so many years ago. So how can I understand that you spoke this knowledge to Vivashan? Kathame tad vijaniyam tamado praktavaniti. And then Krishna told, Bohuni me bhatitani janmani tavacharjuna. Arjun, many many times you have taken birth. So did I. But about those births, I remember everything. Tani aham beda sarvani. I know, I remember everything. But, not tang betha parantapa. But Arjun, So that is our situation. Uh, although we have been coming again and again, taking various bodies, being born again and again, but uh, we don't remember about previous births, whereas Krishna remembers everything. And then Krishna told uh, that Aja Opi San Abhayatma. I am unborn, Aja. And Abhayatma, I am inexhaustible. I don't change Abhaya and Bhutana Misharopisan and I am the source of everything that is there. But Prakriting Sham Adhishthaya Sambhavami Atma Maya taking advantage of my uh, Prakriti Jogamaya internal potency. I manifest myself. So that's the difference. Krishna manifests himself. Sambhavami. He doesn't take birth. He appears. So Krishna manifests himself and plays his pastimes. Sometimes his devotees want to have him as a child. And Krishna has one quality. Whatever his devotee wants, Krishna says, okay. Krishna can't refuse his devotees. So when his devotee says, Krishna, I want you to be my son, Krishna said, thank you, I will do it. <laughs> so that is uh, Krishna's nature, Bhakta Vatsal. He fulfills the desires of his devotees. 
So devotee says, Krishna, you become my son. Krishna says, fine, I will. And that is why Krishna comes. Krishna's body is not material. That has to happen through the father and mother and the body develops in the womb of his mother. These are all material business, materialistic happening. But Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So no matter how much one wants to prevent Krishna's appearance, nobody can. So Krishna appeared in that way. And then Krishna was transferred to Vrindavan. And Krishna grew up in Vrindavan. He spent about <coughs> 15 years in Vrindavan, 15 years of his age. First five years is his Kumar Lila, childhood pastor. Then six to ten is Poganda Lila. And then uh, 11 to 15 is uh, Komar Lila, youthful pastimes. So Krishna performed his pastimes in Vrindavan. And during that time he had a wonderful loving exchange with the residents of Vrindavan, especially the gopis. Gopis' love for Krishna was the most profound. The highest form of devotion is the devotion of the gopis. That is what Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explained. Uh, Ramma kachi dupashana brajabodhu bargena jakalpita The way the brajabodhus, the cowherd damsels, worship Krishna. That is the highest form of worship. Ramma kachi dupashana brajabodhu bargena jakalpita so these gopis were so attached to Krishna that they couldn't bear the separation uh, of seeing Krishna when their eyes winked, blinked. Uh, the eyes blink and during that time they couldn't see Krishna. They couldn't tolerate that separation. And they, uh, they criticized Brahma's creation. What kind of creator he is? What kind of body he created that gives, that makes the eyes to blink? Couldn't he make a body with that the eyes would blink and we won't be separated from Krishna uh, from that moment? So that intense was their attachment to Krishna. And now Krishna is leaving. They thought Krishna would just be leaving just for a day or two. Even then that they couldn't separate, they couldn't tolerate. They just tried to stop Krishna from going to Mathura. And Akrura, uh, in a way which means one who is not cruel. And Gopis said, he is most cruel. He has come here to take Krishna away. His parents shouldn't have given the name Akrura, they should have given him the name Mahakrura. <laughs> so, this is how the gopis displayed their separation. They just tried to stop holding on to the horses, hold, holding on to the wheels. Some even was about to lie down in front of the chariot. We won't let you take Krishna. So Krishna gave the message. Just, I have been invited by the king, so <clears throat> it's my responsibility to go there. Don't worry, I'll come back soon. But when Krishna went to Dwarka, I'm sorry, Mathura, then one after another things started to happen. His mother and father found him after such a long time. So they wanted him to stay there. Then Gargamuni did his uh, Uponayan second initiation, initiation ceremony. And then Krishna decided to go to Sandipani Muni's ashram to study. 64 days he spent there mastering 64 arts. Then he came back 
and in the meantime Jarasandha's wives Asti and Prapti went to their father as a widow as widows and reported to the father look this is what Krishna has done Krishna has killed our husbands and made us widows and Jarasandha said okay I will wipe out the entire Jodhud family and Jarasandha came with 23 Akshohini soldiers to attack Mathura to wipe out Mathura and wipe out the, all the Jadus now mind you this 23 Akshohini soldiers that means such a huge army contingency Kurukshetra battle was fought with 18 Akshohini collectively Durjadhan side, Kaurava side had 11 Akshohini and Pandavas had 7 Akshohini but here uh, uh, Jarasandha came with 23 Akshohini soldiers and on Mathura side all the soldiers have left because they all were Kamsa's followers so when Kamsa was killed they all left maybe they have joined Jarasandha also uh, so <clears throat> there was hardly any soldier so Krishna and Balaram said look we have to do something about it we have to protect the residents of Mathura and at that time two chariots came from nowhere and we have to understand from the spiritual sky <laughs> Krishna's chariot and Balaram's chariot Garura Dhaj one chariot had Garura on the flag and the other had the palm tree Tala Dhaj and the flag and those chariots were fully equipped with horses chariot drivers and weapons all Krishna's weapons also appeared along with that and Balaram's weapons also appeared with that all this while Krishna was without weapon <laughs> he was killing the demons practically uh, barehanded and comes a soldiers he wiped out with the half broken uh, bow of Lord Shiva that he broke one half he took one half Balaram took and with that they wiped out all the fully equipped uh, soldiers of Kamsa Jai Shri Shri Radha Madhava Ki Jai Shriman Mahaprabhu Ki Jai Shakhi Brinda Ki Jai Shri Shri Pralhar Nishinga Dev Ki Jai Shri Shri Panchatattva Ki Jai Shri Shri Jagannath Baladev Subhadra Maharani Ki Jai Jagat Guru Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai Gaur Premanande Hari Hari So this is how uh, <coughs> Krishna and Baladam got equipped and they went out and you can well imagine just a handful of soldiers and Krishna and Balaram going out to face this 23 Akshohini soldiers so then <coughs> Krishna and Balaram uh, was totally covered by Kamsa's soldiers the ladies were watching from the from the rooftop of the palaces and they saw as if Krishna and Balaram like uh, waves of ocean got covered uh, by Jarasandha's army even the flags were not visible so they started to cry thinking that well Krishna and Balaram is now finished some of them fainted naturally uh, when you love somebody and when you see that person is in distress or he is going to lose his life it's very very painful so Krishna performs his pastimes in this way he makes his devotees he puts the devotees in acute anxiety and then he relieves them how do you feel when there is a, when you are in intense anxiety and then 
the anxiety is over. Uh, then your heart becomes filled with happiness, joy. So then <coughs> they saw Krishna and Balaram emerging. And all the soldiers are lying flat on the ground. They were standing up on their chariots, on the horseback, on the elephants, and all of them got wiped out. A river was flowing of blood in that battlefield. A blood of river was flowing. And there's a beautiful description what happened in that river. The el floating elephants on the river look like islands. The, br the hands uh, look like fishes. <laughs> the horses' heads look like sharks. So as if that river uh, was flowing with all kinds of creatures in them. Uh, the river of blood. Then Balaram captured Jarasandha. Everyone was finished. Only Jarasandha was left. So Balaram caught Jarasandha with her and tied him up with Varuna Pass, the chain of Varuna. And <clears throat> but Krishna said, and Balaram was about to kill him. But Krishna said, no, no, don't kill him. He can do a lot of work for us. <laughs> he is going to bring all the demons to us. We have come here to kill the demons and this character is our recruiting agent <laughs> so he'll bring all the demons to us and we won't have to go anywhere we will slaughter them here <clears throat> so Jarasandha for 17 times uh, he came attacked Mathura with uh, with 23 Akshohini soldiers and each time he was and each time he was let go. But when he came for the 18 times, at that time another demon called Kalijavan <coughs> was to attack Mathura with three million soldiers. Thirty lakhs soldiers. Three million soldiers. Javana soldiers. So now both the sides are going to be attacked. Uh, so another pastimes of Krishna. Krishna consulted with Balaram. Look what to do. Because when we are facing with Kalajavan, then Jarasandha will come and attack and there won't be anybody to protect the citizens. So what to do? So then Krishna decided that let me <coughs> transfer the residents of Mathura to safety. So Krishna immediately called Vishakarma, the engineer of the demigods, the architect of demigods, and said, Vishakarma, right in the middle of the ocean, you create a city. And Krishna told ocean god, uh, you create an island. And immediately ocean god uh, created an island and Vishakarma built a city overnight. A palace with palaces for every single resident. And at, by night, the resident, every single family. And all the residents of Mathura were transferred to Dwarka in their sleep. They woke up, they found that they are not in Mathura anymore. <laughs> They are in some other place. And they saw a beautiful city in the middle of the ocean. And different houses have been, different palaces have been designated to different families. So this is how Krishna transported all the residents of Mathura to Dwarka. This is how Dwarka came to existence. And then Krishna faced with uh, Kalajavan 
And anyway, now I am deviating from, diverting from the main story. Okay, since I started, I'll just mention that part. How did Krishna kill Kalajavan? Krishna himself didn't kill Kalajavan. Krishna came out of the house, palace gate, I mean city gate, just wearing a garland, flower garland, no weapon, bare hand. And Jayad, this Kala Javan recognized that they, he got to know about Krishna from Narad Muni's description. And from his description, Narad Muni's description, he could remember that this is Krishna. So, <clears throat> he went to face him. And he thought that since he is uh, without weapon, he would not take any weapon. So he dropped his weapons. He decided to face him bare hands. And then he walked up to him. And Krishna was approaching him. Then when he started to approach Krishna, then Krishna turned and started to move in another direction. And Kaljavan thought, oh, he is running away from me. Okay, I'll catch you. Hare Krishna, so <clears throat> he ran after Krishna to catch him. And although Krishna was just casually walking, Kalajavan couldn't catch him, although running at the full speed. And it seemed that he is just about to catch him. But he couldn't. In this way he just kept running and running and running after Krishna. And Krishna entered into a cave. So Kalajavan thought, okay, now you are afraid of me and you are trying to hide in a cave, so I will uh, see you. So then Kalajavan also entered into the cave. And there he saw in the half darkness, half light, that somebody was sitting on the, in the cave, inside the cave. Someone is sleeping inside the cave. So he thought it was Krishna pretending to be asleep. So he went and kicked him. And that personality, as he woke up and looked at Kalajavana, in a flash of a moment, Kalajavana was burnt to ashes. Who was this personality? He was Muchukunda. So Muchukunda fought for the demigods for many, many years. And then uh, the demigods got Kartikeya and told him, now you can retire uh, because we got our general, the son of Mahadev and Parvati. So now you can. Uh, and we are so thankful to you that you so nicely fought for us, protected us. So please ask for a boon. So Muchukunda said, look, I am so tired. All I want now is to sleep. So let me just have an uninterrupted sleep until I become fully satisfied from my sleep. And if anyone untimely wakes me up, then he'll be burned to ashes as soon as I look at him. The demigod said, fine, <laughs> granted. So this was Muchukunda, uh, who actually, in Krishna made Kalajavana to be annihilated by Muchukunda's glance in this way. Then Krishna came back to Mathura and wiped out Kalajavana's three million soldiers. <coughs> then Jarasandha attacked and this time also Krishna ran away uh, and that's why Krishna is known as Ranchor, one who has left the battlefield. And running, running for a long time 32 crochets, uh, Krishna came to Prabharshan mountain, a huge mountain. And Jarasandha and his soldiers started to look for Krishna there. They couldn't find him. So then they th thought of setting the mountain into fire. And this way Jarasandha thought that he killed Krishna and Balaram. But Krishna and Balaram from top of the mountain jumped down and then went to the ocean, swam across to Dwarka. So anyway, so this is how Krishna got stuck in Mathura 
and then in Dwarka for a long long time he could not the, he could meet with the gopis he sent Uddhava with a message then came the time of solar eclipse Surya Grahan and it is a custom in India still prevalent that people go to Kurukshetra to take bath in Shamanta Panchak at the time of this solar eclipse so the residents of Vrindavan went to Kurukshetra to take bath on the occasion of solar eclipse and they took their bath and now they are ready to go back to Vrindavan everyone is now going back to their respective places and at that time they got the news Krishna also is there in Kurukshetra so they ran to meet Krishna but when uh, Radharani saw Krishna Krishna was already on the chariot just about to leave also when Radharani saw Krishna her heart was not satisfied she felt that this is not the Krishna that I knew my Krishna wears a peacock feather on his head but this person is wearing a royal crown on his head my Krishna wears a yellow garment and he is wearing a royal robe royal dress my Krishna wears a flower garland and this Krishna is wearing all these necklaces and ornaments made of most precious gems my Krishna carries a flute in his hand this person is carrying weapons in his hand nahi nahi ye to Nanda Lala this is not Nanda Lala so Radharani's heart was not satisfied and Krishna also seeing the residence of Vrindavan he became so excited that his hands stretched forward to embrace them after such a long separation Krishna also felt that that in intense desire to embrace his dear most devotees his eyes bloomed like a fully bloomed lotuses his face lit up with a beautiful smile and that is how Krishna became Jagannath Sham Shundar assumed this form <coughs> and Balaram also was induced in the same way and so was Subhadra so this has been very beautifully described how the residents of Vrindavan met Krishna in Kurukshetra and the gopis and the residents of Vrindavan understanding the heart of Srimati Radharani that she was not satisfied meeting Krishna in this way in such a crowded place her heart wants to meet Krishna in the bank of Jamuna in the forest of Vrindavan where the atmosphere is filled with Krishna's sound of Krishna's flute in fifth note so they grabbed the chariot they got hold of the chariot along with the horses and started to pull the chariot towards Vrindavan so that is the Rathajatra festival I'll just read some parts from Chaitanya Charitamrita where it is so beautifully described yeah this is beginning with uh, one verse that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was singing Ch during the Jagannath Ratha Jatra festival Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was singing and dancing in front of Lord Jagannath's chariot and he was singing one song with 
which sounded like a love song a romantic song of a loving affair between the young girl and a young boy ja koumaro haro sha ebo hi bara star ebo chaitra khapa ste chon milite maluti sura bhayo proura kadamba nila sha choi bashmi tathapi tatra surato byaparo lila bidhau रेबा रोधी बेतसी तरुतले चेत समुत्कते दिस महाप्रभु इज सिंगिंग अ सॉन्ग दैट इज सेंग द वन हु स्टोल माई हार्ट वेन आई वॉज अ मेदन म नाउ दैट पर्सन हेज बिकम माई लॉर्ड एंड मास्टर दैट मीन्स ही हेज बिकम माई हजबैंड i found i got him and i am the same pers- personality uh, who was very expert in uh, loving exchange is the same spring na spring time night and the beautiful fragrant f- breeze is blowing from the direction of the kadamba trees carrying the fragrance of malati flowers yet my heart is yearning to go back to the reba river under the betasi trees everyone was wondering why chaitanya mahaprabhu is singing this song only sarup damodar knew why what is the meaning what is the purpose of this song and that is <clears throat> that is being ex- ex- explained here this ek shlok mahaprabhu pore bar bar sarup bina artho ke ho na jane ihar this verse was recited by shri chaitanya mahaprabhu again and again but for sarup damodar no one could understand its meaning i'll just read the english translation i have already explained this verse now i shall simply describe it in brief krishna das kaviraj goswami is mentioning formally all the gopis of vrindavan were very pleased when they met with krishna in the holy place of kurukshetra similarly after seeing lord jagannath shri chaitanya mahaprabhu awake with the ecstasy of the gopis being absorbed in this ecstasy he asked sarup damodar to sing the refrain shri chaitanya mahaprabhu spoke thus to lord jagannath you are the same krishna and i am the same radharani ha uh, shri chaitanya mahaprabhu in the mood of shrimati radharani is explaining this song shri chaitanya mahaprabhu spoke thus to lord jagannath you are the same krishna and i am the same radharani we are meeting again in the same way that we met in the beginning of our lives although we are both the same my mind is still attracted to vrindavan dham i wish that you will place you will please again appear with your lotus feet in vrindavan in kurukshetra there are crowds of people elephants and horses and also the rattling of the chariots but in vrindavan there are flower gardens and the humming of the bees and chirping of the birds can be heard here in kurukshetra you are dressed like a royal prince accompanied by great warriors but in vrindavan you appear just like an ordinary cowherd boy accompanied only by your beautiful flute here there is not even a drop of the ocean of transcendental happiness that i enjoyed with you in vrindavan i therefore request you to come to vrindavan 
and enjoy pastimes with me. If you do so, my ambition will be fulfilled. I have already described in brief Srimati Radharani's statement from Srimad Bhagavatam. In that ecstatic mood, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu recited many other verses, but people in general could not understand their meaning. <clears throat> the meaning of those verses are known to Sadhup Damodar Goswami, but he did not reveal it. However, Sri Rupa Goswami has broadcast the meaning. While dancing, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu began to recite. Okay, this part uh, is quite interesting. The Ratha Jatra is over, and one day Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went to meet Rupa Goswami. Rupa Goswami used to stay by uh, by Haridas Thakur's Bhajan Kuti in Siddhabakul area. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he went, he found that Rupa Goswami went to take bath. So when he was sitting there, he saw on the ceiling of the hut, there is a palm leaf stuck, stuck in there. So out of curiosity, he pulled out that palm leaf and he started to read. A beautiful verse has been written in beautiful handwriting. And each word appeared to be like a piece of pearl. And that verse is saying, Priya uh, Shoayang Kurukshetra Milita. My dear friend, O Gopi, uh, Lalita, O Lalita, O Bishakhi, I met Krishna again in Kurukshetra. And I am the same Srimati Radharani. But my heart and my heart is still yearning to go back to Vrindavan on the bank of Jamuna River, where the whole atmosphere is filled with Krishna's fifth note of his flute. Sound of the fifth note of his flute. Priya Shoyam Krishna Sahachari, Priya Krishna Sahachari, uh, Kurukhetra Milita. I met Krishna uh, in Kurukshetra. And Sahachari Bashmis. And I am the same Radha. But uh, Monome uh, Kalindipulino Bipinayas Prihayati. My heart is yearning to go back to Kalindi River, the bank of Kalindi River, Bipinaya in the forest, where Madhura Murali Panchama Juse, uh, where Krishna's Madhura Murali, the sound of beautiful nectarian sound of Krishna's fear, Krishna's flute, fills the atmosphere with the sound of the fifth note. So, <coughs> Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So this he could see that what Rupa Goswami wrote is the real meaning of the song that he was singing, which appeared to be just an ordinary love song. So when Shura, Rupa Goswami came back, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu affectionately slapped him on his back and said, Rupa, how could you understand my mind? How could you understand my mind? How did you understand my mind? And he asked Saru Dhamada, Saru, how could Rupa understand my mind? And Saru said, who can ever understand your mind? Unless you yourself reveal it to them. Unless you and you reveal it to him. So then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu admitted, yes, Rupa is very dear to me and that's why uh, Rupa understood my mind. So this is how the, uh, the Chaitanya Mahaprabhu revealed the actual purpose and meaning 
of the Ratha Yatra festival. So for these eight days, Jagannath Krishna came to Vrindavan. And now, uh, Jagannath has to go back to Dwarka. There also another very nice incident, very beautiful incident took place. Uh, on the Hera Panchami day, the third day or fourth day after the Ratha Yatra, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, I'm sorry, uh, there is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu enacted a drama. The drama was that when Krishna didn't return from Kurukshetra, in Dwarka everyone is wondering what happened, why Krishna didn't return. And then they got the news that Krishna has been kidnapped. Who dares to kidnap the prince? Uh, kidnapping means stealing a living person. Stealing. As it is stealing is a big crime. Stealing is a crime. Uh, and stealing human beings is even worse crime. And stealing a prince? <laughs> what a terrible crime it is. So Rukmini Devi decided that I have to go and uh, rescue him, rescue the prince and punish the criminals. So she came with the army uh, and surrounded Vrindavan. She arrested all the residents of Vrindavan for this heinous crime of kidnapping the prince. Now there will be judgment. She herself is going to be, she herself is going to judge, but she gave uh, them the opportunity to plead their case. So, <clears throat> Brajabhasi's case was being pleaded by Lalita Devi, I'm sorry, Sarup Damodar, who is Lalita Devi. So, in Vrindavan, what happened? Lalita Devi is the pleader or the lawyer on the Brajabhasi's side. And Narad Muni uh, is the pleader of the, uh, of the queen's side, uh, the state side. Uh, and they are having a discussion. So Lalita Devi or <laughs> Sarup Damodar pointed out as Lalita Devi, she is Lal he's Lalita Devi that we did not kidnap the prince. The prince himself wanted to come. And that's why we simply assisted him. We did not kidnap him. We assisted him. He wanted something, so we fulfilled his desire. So that's why we brought him here in Vrindavan. So at that time, Rukmini Devi admitted, yes, that's true. Krishna in Dwarka during the day he seems to be so absent minded as if his mind is somewhere else and at night in his sleep he calls out to all these residents of Vrindavan uh, Oh Mother Nanda Ma Jasoda Mai Oh Nanda Maharaj Dear Father Oh Subal Sridam Basudham uh, oh, uh, Lalita, Vishakha, uh, Radhe. So, Rukmini was telling that this way we can see that although Krishna is in Dwarka, but Krishna's mind is always in Vrindavan. Then she questioned, what is there in Vrindavan that Krishna is so attracted? Dwarka has everything. All the opulence of that anybody can ever imagine is there in Dwarka. Then why Krishna is not satisfied being in Dwarka, but he is yearning to go to Vrindavan, which is just a forest. And there what he does is just tend the cows. 
and plays with the cowherd boys. So then Lalita Devi told Rukmini Devi Maharani <laughs> this forest of Vrindavan consists of desire trees. Chintamani Prakara Sadma so the land of Vrindavan is made of Chintamani touchstone. Surabhir Abhipalayantam the cows that Krishna is tending, they all are Surabhi cows. And the trees, uh, Dhruma, Bhumish, Chintamani, Ganamai, uh, Toyam Amritam. The trees here are desire trees. So the desire tree, Surabhi cow, Chintamani can fulfill all desires that anyone can have. But residents of Vrindavan, do not want anything but Krishna. All they want is only Krishna. They don't want anything else. Uh, because of their intense love for Krishna, all they want is Krishna. They do not want anything else. So Krishna is attracted to that love of the residents of Vrindavan. So this is how Rukmini Devi understood the greatness and glory of Vrindavan. So she wanted to see Rasa dance. She said, we heard so much about the Rasa dance, so I would have to witness it. And so another Rasa dance was enacted at that time. <coughs> and Rukmini was completely uh, awestruck seeing the beauty of the Rasa dance. So this is how beautiful Krishna's uh, Jagannath Krishna is transforming himself as Jagannath and his wonderful pastimes with the residents of Vrindavan. Thank you very much. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Gaur Premanande Hari Sri Sri Jagannath Baladev Subhadra Maharani Ki Ratajatra Mahamahutsav Ki Sri Sri Radha Madhava Sakhi Brinda Ki Shri Shri Panchatattva Ki Srila Prabhupada Ki Gaur Premanande Hari Hari